Okay. Hello, dear Reddit lovers. I hope the audio quality is okay. We are going to start a brand new tutorial. And this time, there will be no rest. I'm going to show you from A to Z how to create a new radio station, including everything, including your name, your logo, your website, the music, creating the schedule, creating the radio stream, and preparing the website for Google social network and security aspects. This will involve Elementor, this will involve creating a schedule, this will involve uploading your music, fixing the ID3 tags, creating a logo with Photoshop and Illustrator, everything. So you're going to see how easy it is today to create your new radio station website using ProRadio and using the resources available today on the internet. Uh, the steps that we're going to follow are the following. First of all, we are going to pick a good name and we are going to use why not artificial intelligence to choose a grid name. In the second step, we are going to create a grid unique logo for our radio station. And to do that, I'm going to show you how to do it for free using resources from Freepik. Third step is going to be to create our brand new website. And this is going to take less than 60 seconds. Yes because today with Pro Radio and with the new all-in-one solution, this is going to be so freaking fast and easy that you must be crazy to not choose this option. Sincerely, you have everything you need in the single place that is Pro Radio. So you have the player, you have the schedule, you have uh, the music charts, which are now even completely automated with the use of Sidekick. Uh, you have podcasting functionalities, presenters, customizer options, and a totally built-in visual page builder integrated with Elementor and more than 40 widgets for radio station. So uh, once we have our website ready, we are going to prepare our music to upload. Then we are going to create the schedule. We are going to use radio.co uh, because we already have an account there and sincerely speaking after many years of working with many radio station providers there are very good uh, providers out there but we must say radio.co is one of the best ones and one of the easier to use so we're going with that one uh, create a schedule of um, radio shows and then recreate the schedule on our website uh, then we are going to use the Photoshop templates provided within your Pro Dots Radio license to create your own custom radio show templates in Photoshop with your own pictures. And then we are going to create a special homepage for our unique radio station website. Let's get started. So first of all, first of all, Let's go to ChatGPT and let's start looking for a green name. You don't need to spend ages, but what's important to remember is that it must be short, memorable, unique, and effective. It's better if you find something with some linkage with the radio station uh, territory of influence. So if it is something connected with a city, use the name of the city. If it is something connected with a special music style, you must look for keywords related to that specific music style. Uh, in our example here, what we can do is something uh, pretty um, popular. So we are going for some pop radio station. We are going to create a nice, uh, energetic, colorful and pop music radio website. So let's start with a simple question. I need a name for a new radio station. Make me 20 ideas with short, unique and memorable names. Also, what we want is to have them easy to spell. Because when you say the name of a radio station over the air, 
you want people to be able to actually type the name of the radio station and remember that uh, a web radio is worldwide. This means that people might be speaking other languages and this means that they may not have such an extensive English language uh, knowledge uh, in order to correctly type a name which is too hard to type. So, we can say make it easy to spell even for non-English speakers, which is going to avoid um, names that are too complicated to pronounce. Let's leave it working. Okay. Here we have a list of names. They are clearly uh, very long. Let's see if there is something nice. Pulse FM, Zenit Radio, Lumina FM, Oasis, Celesta, Harmony, Serene. Okay. Uh, let's make them shorter and more memorable. And let's say linked to link to pop and dance music for a young public. Okay, here we are. We have a better list of names. What we need to do is to make sure that the name you are picking is not already existing. So, uh, let's look for the best ones. For instance, this for sure is existing. This for sure is existing. This for sure. Pop wave, let's look for this. Pop wave. It's a store. Clap vibe. It's not existing rhythm like this, so this is something we could work on. You may even find something that it's existing because nowadays it's impossible to find something that was never used before, but perhaps it's abandoned, it's not used, there are a uh, hundred results on Google, so that's fine. Nobody is ever going to come to you and say, oh, I had a page 20 years ago on Facebook with this name. So um, keep the mind open and actually uh, evaluate the situation. If something it's a good name, you can use it if it's not really in use by a company or by an existing radio station. So, combine, for instance, uh, names and here we are, 100, oh, wow, one, it's existing. That's crazy. Everything you look for has high chance of exist okay let's go with this groove club radio because there is nothing really names like this. There is no radio station with this name. These are uh, popular keywords linked to the music and there is no radio station with this name. To make a test, let's look for a domain name or we can go even here on product radio. You can look on register a new domain and see if that's available. 
roofclub.com is unavailable. Okay, this looks like something pretty old, but it is not, it is something existing, we cannot use that. Okay, this is free. Okay, it's it's in use, but this you can buy, for instance. This step is extremely important because um, you may actually not want to change the name of your radio. Then you want uh, one day you are going to start making merchandise and making business cards and making promotions. So it's really important to spend more time than what we are spending now in finding the perfect name. Uh, it's uh, very important that you don't get sued by existing radio station or uh, companies and that the name that you choose can be used for any year to come. So we are now going to use this as provisional name. Uh, you may want to invest a little bit more time to find the perfect name. If you want to spend one day, two days, one week on this, that's great. Find a name that you can tell to your friends, family, and people over the radio without being embarrassed for. So this must be short and easy to spell. If you say to the people groovedanceradio.com, for instance, that existing, this is a good domain name. So we are now going to build a staging website and then buy the domain afterwards. Let's go with the step number two, which is creating a logo. To create a good logo without spending a cent, so staying within the budget, we are going to use Freepik. You can have a premium account if you want to use uh, this website even for uh, more good pictures for your website, but that's not required. We use it a lot for our demos, but there are also a lot of good free resources. In our specific case, we are going to use the official Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, but you can find, uh, for instance, a free version of Photoshop on photopia.com. And the thing is, you don't really need to own a creative, creative uh, suit subscription to create your radio station. You can use free tool over the internet. We have the company uh, licenses, of course, for Photoshop and Illustrator, which are the most professional tool for doing these things. And we are going with that, but it is not required. You can do a good logo and photo editing without spending one single cent. So we are going to look for a good radio station logo. What you need to filter for is vector because that's the most versatile format. And if you look for Photoshop, you're going to find things that are not really suitable for, for a logo design. Instead, vector is the format for logos because they can be scaled. They can be scaled for any resolution. They can be adapted for uh, for instance, um, a case for a car, for a business card, for everything you want. So refine your search with keywords related to what you are looking for. In our case, we want to do something uh, colorful, dynamic, simple, and effective for a pop music radio station. So let's look for something that fits with our uh, project. Um, if you are not a graphic designer, you can use, again, ChatGPT to ask, for instance, give me suggestions for color palettes for a pop music radio targeted on 18 to 50 audience 
and you're going to get a list of colors that you can choose from. Pink, electric blue, this works a lot. Bright yellow, purple, white, neon green, turquoise, or turquoise, depending on your pronunciation, electric purple, teal, gold, perhaps more for hip hop and uh, R&B music. So we are going for some uh, purple and blue color, and we are going to look for some logo that can adapt with this color palette. Let's filter the results by color, and let's start to open some links in new tabs. You need to stay far from things with gradients, things that are overcomplicated, things that have neon effects, because the logo needs to look good in a very, very small format. Uh, what old school graphic designer will tell you is that a good logo needs to fit on the arm of a wristband watch, of a wristwatch. So something like this, something like this, something like um, perhaps what is this? This is not a good logo. This is something nice. And, and we are only looking for the free, uh, for the free offer. If you go to the premium offer, you're going to have many more uh, options available. Um, it's, it's okay to have something with two, three colors. Uh, it's not okay to have something that requires, for instance, logos like this are okay. Logos like this are perhaps hard to decline. Like this, it's not a good choice. This is not a good choice. It's it, This in mobile is going to disappear. These are not good choices. You need to be a little bit wise in how to choose a logo. If you have any doubt, perhaps uh, choose 10, 20 logos, and then go deleting the ones that you are not sure of. Simple stuff like this is the best. While complicated stuff like this, it's very hard afterwards to use. If you need to make a t-shirt with something like this, that is going to be a nightmare. It's not going to be possible that you cannot represent a logo like this across different type of printing and media. So now, this is something that can fit with our project and we can easily decline a logo like this, for instance, putting the text on the right or uh, the text underneath for big representation. Let's go with this project and let's download this logo here in our new folder. Let's unzip the logo and let's see what we have inside. So we have an APS format, Illustrator format, JPEG, and the license um, information. Once we open this in Illustrator, we are going to see that there are four different separated logos. In our case, we can go with something so uh, a good test that you can do is to see this very small. If you don't understand what you are looking at, that's not a good choice. You need to see it perhaps 50 pixel or 40 pixel big, which is a good representation of what it can look like if it is the icon of a website in a browser tab. A good logo needs to work here. This is a good logo. This is a good, okay, a little bit not good logo. Good, good, good. This is harder to see. So what you want to see is if it works when you are really zoomed out. In our case, we are going to choose, okay, this one, they are all good, but this one is perhaps too thin. This is too complicated. This is nice and this is nice. Uh, this is more recognizable. 
this is more unique uh, in the terms of shape. So for our uh, demo, let's go with this one because we want to make something very unique. With command new, let's create a new file, paste, and oh, ungroup. And we don't want any gradient on the pure shape. So we are going to choose plain colors, put it black, make it bigger. And this is our logo. Let's save it in our uh, staging folders. And here we are. Because now it's time to go in um, another website, which is Google Fonts. We want our logo to be available in Google Font because for every further application that we are going to require in the life of our radio station, we are going to create a lot of websites, for instance, promotions or stuff like this, and we want our font to look good because there are other font websites like the font.com without going to the premium ones, which of course are many more and you can purchase uh, cool fonts for 100 or 200 bucks. But uh, we are going to try to stay in the budget. So fonts like these are hard to bring to um, the website. It's possible, but it's hard and many fonts are not licensed to be used on a website. So instead of going there, we are going here. If you are from countries like Germany, where Google fonts are uh, basically forbidden by law in the website, remember that Pro.Radio does not load fonts from Google. So how does it work? Once you choose a font in the Pro.Radio typography options, the font is going to be copied in your server. This means that you don't have cookies from Google when using Google Fonts. So you can use Google Fonts without breaking the law. If you are still in doubt, there is a checkbox to disable them, but you can make a test on your website by using a website like Google Fonts Checker. Put the URL of your website here once your page is created with um, Pro.Radio. And unless you didn't implement third-party plugins which are loading other Google fonts, our theme is not loading Google fonts. And this check is going to return you with a positive result, positive in terms of website not using Google fonts because fonts are uh, downloaded and installed on your own website. So what we are going to do now here is to look for a good, powerful font to use on our website. This is something extremely fun to do. This is something you want to invest some time on. And um, now we're going to be a little bit uh, quick on this choice. So I'm going to show you how Google Font works. It's important as very first requirement that you choose a font compatible with your language. If your language has uh, a lot of accent letters like German, French, or something like this, you want to look for Latin extended. So we are filtering fonts with, uh, which provide all of the accent letters that you need in your language. Otherwise, these letters are going to be uh, replaced by uh, a square or some other accent letters. We are going to leave technology. We don't need the decorative stroke. Uh, we can go for sans serif. And uh, these will leave like this. What you need to do is to look for at least three styles. So you have a light and a bold font, and they have a little bit of difference. So uh, this is the first uh, way of filtering fonts that is going to be the font for your website and for your logo. And you can choose, my recommendation is to go, even though the website allows you to choose seven different font families, go for two 
macro font families. So you can choose a font for the texts, which must be easy to read, light, and render optimally in a small format like 10, 12 pixels. And another font, which is good for titles. And you can go for something more unique, eccentric, and perhaps harder to read because it's only going to be used for short, big texts. First of all, uh, scroll down and see which ones you like the most. You can, if you want, type something. We are going to type the name of our radio. So, the name of our radio was Groove Club Radio. And we can type it in small and in caps. In this way, we are going to see how the name of our radio works with each specific font. Considering this name is very long, perhaps a good choice is something with a shorter, with a more uh, compressed aspect. Because if you go for something like this, it will require a very, very large logo on the header of your website. Also, you can go for uh, something that is a little bit more thick, so the logo looks uh, powerful. Roboto Condensed is a good choice. Oswald is a good choice for our specific radio name. Uh, of course, this is just a demo. If a radio station with this name exists, please uh, consider we are just making an example. We are not really stealing your name. We are just making a design example. This is a nice font. This also comes with different uh, thickness and has a Cool rounded, cool rounded um, appearance. Another test you want to do is to check it at 12 pixels, because some fonts are not of good quality, and when you look it at 12 pixels, it uh, gets all squashed up. It must maintain the legibility in a small size at the biggest at the boldest version of the font. So this is good because we can still read what's written here. We are going to use doses as font for titles and uh, captions and for our logo design. And we are going to use another more legible font for uh, texts, which is going to be, for instance, a Roboto or a Lato or something like this. Now, let's download this logo. How do you download the logo? To download the logo, what you want to do is Click on Get Font and click Download. Let's make a folder for the logo. Download the font. The procedure is the same even if you are on PC, so don't worry. Double click on the font and install it. Once the font is here, we can make some tests for our logo. Let's make a version with text.
Since this tutorial is about making a radio station in the shorter time frame possible, we are not uh, spending too much time on the logo, but this is something nice to play with and to make tests in order to reach the perfect result you want to achieve. If you are sure, you can get uh, some nice logos even on Fiverr.com for a few bucks. Or if you want a professional result from a web agency, you can uh, feel free to ask us for a quotation. We will come out with some nice proposal, different color palettes, different fonts, different offers, and you can choose the one you like and we can work together on this. But uh, now we would just want a logo out there in the shorter time possible. So we are going to just go with this, perhaps work a little bit on the spacing And here we go. Group, align, and let's stay with this. Boom. Step number two, let's go on Photoshop and make the logo for our website make it bigger and resize it later. So let's go for something like this. I've pasted pixels, but actually it's better to keep the vector format so we can use smart object. Let me repeat, this is not how normally how normally a procedure is done. We are just going for a quick logo placeholder for our experiment. <clears throat> but still we want it to look a little bit unique. Here we go. Let's save the Photoshop format. Now we're going to use couriers to create our color palette.
let's ask ChatGPT to create some colors for us that we are going to see and test with colors.com, which is an excellent website to create your color palettes. Sometimes I'm checking if the microphone is still on. And let's go with this. Electric purple, light shade and dark shade, and electric blue, dark shade and light shade. Then we have background, <clears throat> paper, text, and secondary color. These could be already taken in our website, but we are going to test them to see if we like them how they are or if we want to change them. Nice, nice color palette. This is the background. This is the paper. And we are happy with this color. We are happy with these colors because they work fine together. And we can keep this color palette. So, something that you can do if you don't like one of these colors, for instance, you can change this, unlock it, and press the space bar. Colors will come out with ideas that match with the other colors that you are using. If you want to change another one, you can set back the color you have, lock this, and change this. So you are sure you are picking colors that are working fine together. In our case, let's stay with what we have here. So we have primary, secondary, background, paper, and text. If you don't want to miss it, just grab a screenshot and keep it for later use. Okay. Now that we are ready, let's go back on Photoshop and let's make our logo using these colors in negative and positive. So double click on the layer, gradient overlay and paste those colors. Here we are. Now, this is the positive version and we can have also negative one. Let's use the background color suggested by chat. Solid color, paste this, put it down, remove this, and color overlay. Here we are. Okay, on the website, it will look more or less this size. Now, following our schedule, we have the name, we have the logo, we are missing the music. We are not getting into the topics about licensing, laws, taxes, and all of these kind of things, because these are different on every country, they also depends on the streaming provider. For instance, if you are in Germany and you go with loud.fm, they take care of all of the licensing thing. Uh, same thing if you are uh, based on USA or UK, 
and you go with Live 365 provider, they are going to take care of all of the licensing, the restriction and stuff like this. And the world is big and we know from our customers that that's different in every country. For instance, in Spain, that's very cheap to have a web radio license. In Italy, it's a bit more expensive. Um, it depends a lot on which music you play, if you play music, if you only speak. So in our case, <clears throat> we are going to make a radio playing non-licensed music. So music that is licensed when you buy it and is not uh, something that falls under other type of registration or licensing um from any country how to find this type of music to find this type of music what you can do is go on google and type how to start a radio station you will find within the first results our uh big guide that covers step by step everything you need to know to start a radio station, which is um, pretty big. So it's divided in many chapters. You want to go to chapter number seven. Oh, uh, sorry. You want to go uh, where to find music for your radio. So chapter number four and we have a list of websites. In our specific example, we are getting our uh, demo music, which is uh, for this demo purpose from jamendo.com. It's a very nice website with a lot of music and you can choose the licensing type for your radio, for instance, or download some uh, test music for your radio. This music uh can be used for streaming or you can have podcasts uh which you can get directly from the artists or you can get uh white label music doesn't matter where you get your music uh what it matters now for the purpose of our uh demonstration video is how to prepare this music and how to actually start streaming it so let me repeat Take your own information about licensing and stuff like this. We have some useful links in our website, uh, which gives you a few links for the most popular countries. And it's here. But um, we are now focusing only on the music and how to have our radio playing. We previously downloaded a few MP3 files for the purpose of our test, which are here. And I'm going now to show you something extremely important when it comes to preparing the music for your radio station. This super important detail is the ID3 tags of your MP3 files. Why? Because without ID3 tags, your files are going to be anonymous. So you will not be able to know which song is playing. People are not going to be able to know what they are listening at. So wherever you get your MP3 from, for instance, ripping uh, old vinyls from the 30s that you had in your basement, once you have the MP3 file, you want to use a software like X iTunes, now music from uh, Apple or other uh, PC equivalents. On PC, there are actually tons of alternative free good softwares to manage ID3 tags. What you need to do is open the files, drag your MP3s, in your songs list, make sure you have this type of visualization. And then remember that the ID3 tags are not based on the file name. The file name could be anything. The ID3 tags are an information written within the 
single file hidden metadata. So once you're here, right click on the file, click info, and here you can verify the ID3 tags, the artwork, you can upload your own artwork if you want. Cancel this. You can upload your own artwork if you don't like this. And make sure the title artist and album possibly are correctly compiled. If not, your music is going to be without title on your radio station and this is going to be a nightmare. Uh, once done, once you compile the files, remember that this is not going to alter from iTunes, at least, the original file that you dragged in here. Instead, this is creating a copy of your files in another folder. So where are my optimized ID3 tag, uh, tagged files? Let's make a new folder and you are going to see where they are. Right click, show in Finder. Here we are. The files are in the iTunes music library. What you need to do before uploading them to your uh, streaming service is to actually or copy this file to another folder or upload this version of the file, not the one that you had here. You can see that, that uh, iTunes changed the name of the file and possibly it changed the formatting of the ID3 tags. So you can see the ID3 tags now are the same because we didn't change them, but if you compile them in the new file, they are going to be fine. In the old file, they are still going to be missing. Let's assume for the sake of our demonstration that we have now tons of great music ready for streaming, ready for uploading. What do we need now? We need our radio station stream up and running. So, for the sake of the purpose, I am going to use radio.co. But remember that Product Radio is compatible with any popular audio streaming provider and format. So, whether you have an online provider or you want to install on your own server and hosting your own uh, streaming um, software, with Pro Radio you can display titles, song history, and artwork uh, disregarding by the provider you are using. To see a list of all of the compatible providers, just go on the chapter 12 of our knowledge base and you can see the list here. As you can see, it's pretty long and every time we find a new provider that is not supported yet, we are going to modify our player and add the support for that specific provider. So, how to create a radio channel and then how to display titles for Shoutcast, Icecast, IC Metadata, Radio.co, hard time, radionomy, live 365, uh, text files, radio king, azura cast, radio jar, IC metadata, another format, max cast, radio boss, loud fm, jazzler, media cp or streamer.co, secure net system and sonic panel. Most of the providers out there fall into these categories. So even if provider is called whatever, atomic web radio streaming provider, whatever, 99.9% .9 of chances are that it's using one of these two formats 
one of these metadata or IC metadata format or one of these like Sonic Panel, MediaCP, Zessler, Radio Boss, Azura Cast or Radio Jar, which are incredibly popular uh, softwares and formats. So no worries, whatever your streaming provider is, you can put your radio channel in your website based on pro.radio WordPress theme. Even though we now make the test with radio.co, which is one of the best providers out there. So you can do a free trial or go uh, straight with an account. Now I'm going to show you how to upload your music and create schedule. For this reason, we are going to use uh, my personal testing channel. And we are going to use this channel. Uh, as you can see, you have statistics of the listeners. These are people listening from the Pro Radio demo websites. And you have the bandwidth and the storage and stuff like this. If you stream live from your own computer, like using BAT or using Tractor or using uh, OBS, uh, you are not even going to use storage. You just need to take care of transmitting the audio and the metadata of the songs straight from your local DAO or uh, streamer client to the online server. In this case, we are going to use AutoDJ. AutoDJ is the name that defines uh, a software functionality based on uploading your own music, creating playlists, and scheduling this music on the calendar. First of all, on the left sidebar of radio.co, you are going to find a media folder. These are the demo tracks from royalty-free uh, websites that we are using in our demo. And these are podcasts we had from artists who sent them in the past as testing or uh, live radio testing. Now, as you can see, these are the ID3 tags of the files that we uploaded. If you want to add your tracks here, that's crazy simple. Let's delete this. Imagine these are the MP3s with fixed, with uh, arranged ID3 tags. So they have been already previously verified and adjusted. Just take them and drag them to your media library. Now, an important note regarding the artwork is that among this list of providers, some include the URL of the artwork within the, the um, media information. So you have title, artist, and a uh, link to the JPEG file of the song. In this case, Pro Radio is going to use the image that you are attaching to the MP3 file. So these covers are going to be used. If you use uh, Icecast, Shoutcast, Text, uh, IC metadata or other formats which are not including this information, our player will look on the free iTunes API library for the artist and title and get the artwork for you. It can return a wrong information. So why is this? Because there are, for some records, there are tons of different albums including the same song. Uh, or there could be a song with the same artist name and same song name in iTunes that is not the song that you are playing right now. In these cases, you can see the wrong information. So uh, this cannot be fixed on the software end because basically um, it's impossible to know which is the correct one. Uh, when there will be some mind reading uh, thing that can listen to the song and find exactly the right one. This could probably be fixed on the iTunes side. Otherwise, uh, you may sometimes, if your streaming provider is not radio.co or one of the other ones, including artworks, and the artworks are not included in your 
ID3 tags of the MP3 files, you may see wrong covers in your website. Remember, this has an entertainment purpose. So please don't contact the support to say the picture is wrong because yes, the picture can be wrong if you're playing a song that has an ambiguous name and you are not including the artwork in the MP3 files or not using a format that includes artwork in the metadata. So once you know this, once you know this, radio.co for instance includes the artwork and it is now elaborating the songs. You can see that some are not correctly found, some others are, and some may be still elaborating the song because it needs to transcode the song on the server. All of your music is in the media library. The next step is going to be to create your playlists. Let's imagine that we are going to have three playlists, morning, afternoon, and night. So let's go to playlists and create three playlists. New playlist. And let's set the chord. Morning. <laughs> Afternoon. And night. Here we go. The three playlists are available, afternoon, night, and morning. Now we need to put the music in these playlists. Let's go here and choose the songs that you want to put in your playlist. So now I'm going to use like random songs And my suggestion that I'm going to cover uh, deeper later on is to include in your playlist every few songs the jingle of your radio station because this is very important for the branding and the growth of your radio. Without a good jingle, and the jingle must mention the URL of your radio station website, uh, people who listen to your radio may like it and may not find it anymore because they don't know the name of the radio, the website of the radio, where to find it, who is speaking, which music you are doing. So remember to not only put music, but put the jingle of your radio. Now, since this is a test channel that we use to promote uh, product radio and let you try out the player, we have a jingle, which is a... Uh, information and information about the Pro Dot Radio WordPress theme. Uh, you are not a professional speaker, but you need a jingle. This is very popular. So what can you do? Just go on Fiverr.com, look for audio jingle, and you will find hundreds and hundreds of producers who will deliver an excellent result within 24 hours for about. 20 bucks or less. For instance, we found we are not really uh, we are not really partners with Fiverr or nothing or with Brian, but we purchased a jingle from this producer and the result was excellent. So the thing is, you can get an excellent jingle, as you can see, for very few bucks and uh, really uh, elevate the quality of your radio station. Make sure you put your player play playlists and your songs in the radio. Let's put a few songs more. Okay, if the artwork is missing, still 
Pro Radio Player will look for these in the iTunes library and find an artwork for you. Save the changes. Let's do the same for the night and morning playlists. Okay. And we save the changes. The last step is to create your schedule. Schedule means the calendar of when its playlist is playing. As you can see, we have a standard schedule that which was previously created. Let's delete this event. And create a new one. Night. And. Let's set the end time or you can drag it like this. This is some, this type of calendar in JavaScript, it's always a little bit picky. And this is the reason on Pro.Radio we use another software for the schedule of the radio shows. But don't worry, it's, this is basically the same mechanism um, on the auto DJ of every streaming software out there. Uh, I've tried all of them, MediaCP. Sonic Panel, Everest Cast, they have uh, small differences, but it's mostly the same for all of them. So it can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but once you learn how to do it, that's pretty simple. And remember that if you are localized in a country with a summer and winter time zone, you will need to manually change and adjust your playlist. Let's imagine this is okay. You can repeat it every day. You can change single days, whatever. Now, this is saved to make sure the calendar is fine. Go back to the schedule and make sure this is loading correctly. Why? Because this is based on a client application, which means it runs on your browser. It can, it can fail when saving. And what you want to do is reload the page to make sure your changes are fine. That said, our radio Let's assume we prepare the playlist for the whole week and our radio is basically running. What can you do? Click play and listen to what is going on on air. Make sure this is the current song and make sure you can hear some noise. This is really half of the work. Now we are ready to create our radio station website. Let's close a few tabs. Let's leave radio.co open. Let's leave Gmail open. Let's imagine you have already 
found your nice jingle. And it's time to go for our website. Here we go. You have two options here. If you have your own hosting, if you know what WordPress is, if you uh, want to manage the website on your own hosting and just purchase the WordPress theme, this option, which uh, starts here, is the basic uh, self-hosted WordPress installation available here and is your best option. This means that you download the installer file and follow the tutorial, install the theme, install the plugin, and import the demo. Otherwise, and also if you want an excellent hosting for radio stations with uh, 10 gigabytes space, full cPanel account, three emails, everything, WordPress, Pro Radio plugins, and demo pre-installed, there is now another option. This makes it free, keen, simple to have your radio station website up and running in 60 seconds. So, the new version is called All-in-One Radio. You can click here or you can go here and you will find out All-in-One Radio website. This means you don't need to do anything. Uh, this has incredible advantages, not only because you are 100% sure that you are not going to have problems with your website, because some people go with these uh, extremely cheap uh, hostings like $1 a month and then complain that the website is low, they have problems, the support doesn't reply and stuff like this. Yes, you, you want to spend 10 bucks a year and you complain that uh, Pro Radio, which is a professional radio station website software, is slow. It's like uh, you are trying to load uh, 20 tons of boat on a bicycle and complain that the bicycle doesn't work. The problem is not the boat nor the bicycle, is that those are not meant to work together. So if you have a good hosting, any basic hosting uh, starting from five, ten bucks, like Bluehost, SiteGround, A2 Hosting, or Fast Comet, or WordPress.com work good with Pro Radio. If you want an only one solution with zero setup, zero problems, and incredibly faster support simply because we are able to enter in your hosting and solve for you in no time every problem, All-in-One Radio is the solution for you. This is not only recommended if you have no experience. For instance, if you come from Squarespace or if you come from WordPress.com or if you come from Wix.com, this is an excellent solution because you need to have zero knowledge about cPanel WordPress or whatsoever that your website is going to be up and running. It's a good solution even if you know what you're doing because this is a professional cPanel hosting package. It has an entry-level price, which includes Pro Radio WordPress theme license, updates, support, uh, hosting, three emails, a lot of space, automated backups, and much more. This solution includes everything you have on Pro.Radio basic software, all of the demos, the player, and all of the Elementor widgets and all you see right here. You need more space, you need more emails, you need more domains, just contact us. We don't have thousand pricing plans because instead we craft the pricing plans on the requirements of each specific client. This means that if you know that you are going to need 20 gigabyte, 30 gigabyte or whatever, just drop us a message and we tell you the cost for your custom plan. Here you can see all of the available demos. So uh, there are more demos available for Pro Radio because essentially 
this requires to be uh, linked to the all-in-one software. But we publish uh, more demos uh, than we can handle in the all-in-one. No worries. If you like something like the demo 22 that is not available in the all-in-one website, you can still have it. And I'm going to show you later on how. If in doubt, contact the support and tell us, I want this demo that is not available in the all-in-one radio and we are going to install it for you in one hour. So let's go to our list of demos. Here you can check them and you can choose which one you like the most. Okay, how to choose the demo? Remember that everything you see in one demo can be achieved with any other demo. Colors, decorations, functionalities, charts, schedule, news, everything. These are functionalities that belong to the Pro.Radio software, not to the demo. The theme running under the hood, it's always the same. You don't need to choose a demo depending on the functionalities you want. You need to choose the demo depending on the style you like, because if you like something that you see here, like a new slideshow and you say, oh, but I like the style of uh, another demo, don't worry. Go with this style, then with Elementor, you can just drag and drop each element on each page. That said, we are now going to go with the demo 15 simply because the colors of our logo are compatible with this demo and is going to be very quick to set up. Remember that if you like a demo and you don't like the colors, you can change them in very few clicks. You can change colors, demo, contents, menu, layout, home page. You can change everything. You can create headers and footers completely with Elementor. There are no design restrictions. The only limit is your skill, your imagination, and your will to achieve great results. Now for our demonstration, we are going to go with the demo number 15, and you are going to see how quick and easy it is to have your website up and running in no time. Okay. Let's imagine you already have an old radio station website and you are making it new. So the best uh, way to do this is instead of choosing your actual domain, start with a free staging subdomain that we offer for free for your staging website. Once you choose the demo, there are three options. Register a new domain, so you can pick your new domain. We don't have all of the extensions, just the most popular. You can purchase a domain everywhere else. So you can purchase your domain on one.com, on Bluehost, on SiteGrounds, on GoDaddy, doesn't matter. If you already have a domain, you can use your existing domain and just change the name server or the IP of your domain. Our support is online 24 seven to help you with this. Another option is to use a subdomain and this option is recommended for everybody. Why? This option is recommended because if you have an existing website and you want to keep it online until the new website with ProRadio is ready, this option allows you to work on a staging subdomain and change the pointing of the domain afterwards. So zero downtime of your website. This solution is also perfect if you are unsure on your radio station name. In this case, we are making a test. We are going to make a staging um, installation for Groove, Groove Club Radio. 
Let's go. You don't need to put HTTPS. Please don't put HTTPS. Whatever option you are choosing, do not put the protocol inside here, only the domain name. And this is automatically choosed for you. So let's go with Groove Club Radio. Check the availability. Do not enter words such as uh, test staging or other things which might be forbidden because our system works. As you can see, there are actually two options. Monthly for just 20 bucks a month or with a crazy, crazy saving and annual subscription for 120 bucks. So why is it crazy to not go for this option? First of all, you save when you go for all-in-one radio, you save entirely the not you are instantly saving the price of the license. So you don't pay $84 extra. This is included with the hosting. The second reason is that you are having a hosting quality that other providers are charging about uh, 10 to 15 to 20 dollars a month just for the hosting. We are offering a semi dedicated hosting with just a couple thousand users for server. The CPU of our servers never goes above 1% and our servers are 100% created for radio stations. So you might had you might have had uh, caching issues before. Caching issues are, for instance, if your website is displaying outdated information like the radio show of last week. What does it mean? Hosting providers create a picture of your pages to save money because the most expensive part of a hosting business is CPU and RAM. So what they do is they force your website with incredibly long cache. So your website cannot display the current radio station information. This regarding the fact that now Pro Radio has an anti-caching system for the current radio show, which you can activate from uh, the customizer at best feature, and this will prevent issues for with the most popular caching systems of popular providers, is regarding this, still you will have problems, for instance, when you change stylings in the customizer and they are not reflected in front hand, or when you change uh, fonts or you change colors and they are not correctly appearing. So all of these problems are happening because these hosting providers are not crafted for radio stations. This is why last year, last year we created the perfect hosting for radios. Everything till the tiniest details is prepared for your radio station website. This is why you are not only saving a lot of money, you are saving a lot of effort. Everything is pre-installed and you are sure that everything works as it should. On top of this, the performance, as you will see in a second, is amazing. This is why before you buy any hosting with other providers, I want you to try out all-in-one radio website. And now I'm also going to give you a crazy, crazy 16% extra discount on this that you can use for the first year of your all-in-one radio website. The discount code is the following. Continue. 
this is your chosen staging, our chosen staging subdomain that we are going to replace later on with the real website URL once the website is ready. Here you can enter the coupon code and here you can create your customer account. So now I'm going to uh, use our testing account and I am going to cut to the second part where you can see the email that you are going to receive. Let's pause the video and here we go. You can see it's now 12 and 7 minutes and we already have our order confirmation ready in our inbox. This email is extremely important because uh, this contains your chosen domain name and the instructions to log in into your panel. So let's see how this works. Let's go to our service page. Remember that this can take a couple minutes more uh, for the installation. So you can already check this URL and see if the website is up and running. This is perfectly normal because we are in a staging subdomain which was recently created and this may take a few hours before installing the SSL certificate. So let's click advanced and proceed. And here we are. The website is there, up and running. Our radio station website is ready to use. We did zero work zero installation, zero coding. The radio is here. Now, as you can see, the license is not linked because the license needs to be entered manually. Just follow the instructions and now it is fully connected. When you see this green box, which takes a few minutes more, the website is fully connected. We can log in in our new WordPress website. Once here, the very first thing we need to do is to choose a strong password. So click on this banner, set a new password, copy this in a safe place. If you lose it, no worries. You can enter from cPanel. Make sure to update your email and update your profile. Once done, your website is almost there. You will see a notification, invalid license. Click enter your license. You will be prompted to an input form. So what you need is to go back to your service information, go to your product, my product and services, click on the license key, select the key. Do not click the reissue button because this is for changing domain, then paste your license key. Click verify and here we are. Now, we publish Pro Radio updates very often. So the first thing you need to do is to update your website and update the Pro Radio plugins. As you can see, the hosting has an extremely fast performance. You can dismiss all of these notifications. Let's give a look at the front end and the website is here, up and running. <clears throat> now, what we need to do is to link our own streaming to our website. If you are in doubt, if you are in doubt on how to do that, there are a lot of pages depending on your uh, type of stream. Start from create a radio channel. Please don't skip this information. If your website is in HTTPS, you cannot play a radio that is HTTP. This will never work. This doesn't depend on ProRadio. This is basic, 
browser security. Trying to bring an HTTP string inside of an HTTPS page is the equivalent of trying to bring a gun in an airport. It's not allowed by the security of the browser. It is not a problem of the theme or of the player. It is a basic security limitation in place since 2018. This is why 99.9% of the streaming provider are now giving you, as Radio.co or many others, uh, HTTPS stream. If your provider doesn't give you HTTPS stream, contact them and ask for this URL because it might be hidden or change streaming provider or create a rely. You cannot put an old HTTP radio in your safe website. More information is available at this link. So, how to create a radio channel? The first thing you want to do is to go to your website, go to the dashboard, go to radio channels, add a new radio channel, and and here we go. Now, the most important information is the MP3 stream URL. If in doubt, you can open the documentation from your admin. Where is the MP3 stream URL? And independently on the streaming service or provider you are using, somewhere, somewhere, uh, whether you use Centova Cast or you use Everest Cast or MediaCP or uh, uh, everything else, there is a place where you get the links of your stream. So, I don't even remember where the links of the stream are here. For instance, on radio.co, I go by trial and error, and here we are. This is our stream URL. Don't just copy and paste this URL without knowing what you are doing. Please, open a new tab, paste this URL, and see what is going on. You need to be able to listen to the radio, okay? This needs to play some sound. You need to see a player independently on the browser that you are trying. Some streaming provider, instead of uh, allowing you to listen, are going to start a download, which you want to stop because it's endless, because it's the stream. That's fine as well. So you need to see a player or you need to start a download. If you plug, if you paste your uh, stream URL in a tab and it opens a page, that's not good. That is a link to a website page. It's not your MP3 stream URL. So this works and we are creating our radio channel. Now, we also want to display our song information. So the next step involves looking for the correct name of your streaming provider. Icecast and Shoutcast are perhaps the most complex uh, streaming um, setups, and this is why we cover them with an advanced video tutorial in our academy.pro.radio website. And it is here, but we don't need it because with radio.co it takes one click. If in doubt, for as dumb as this procedure is, what you can do is click on this page and these are the instructions. So what we want to do is select radio.co and read, just read. For radio.co users, find the ID in the streaming URL, your ID. This is the streaming URL, and this is what we want to put here. Here you can enter a logo and a player icon. Let's go with them. 
first of all, this logo is going to be displayed at the top of the radio channel page and the icon is going to be in the player. So let's make, for instance, a transparent logo for negative environment with this. Save in PNG. I would strongly recommend to call this image logo and perhaps the name of your radio because you're going to uh, be needing to look for it in your media library a lot of times during uh, the life of your radio station. Beast, not here we are. and an icon for the player. PNG transparent, no need. JPEG, but it's five. Logo. Always give good names to your files. And here we are. Let's publish. And let's try out our radio station. That's it. Up and running. Second step. Let's customize our page. Set the logo in the header. And let's make a variation for mobile, which is going to appear in this version. We can use this one. And save it. of a hundred pixel. If we put it in the right place, but we don't, so let's do that again.
Here we go. Remember then to go to your website identity. <laughs> Change the name. And set your icon. It's recommended to set something bigger, but we use this one. That's okay. And here we are. Here, you can change everything about your website. Colors, font, and much more. In this specific case, I want to make headers centered. For instance, you can change a lot of other parameters. I'm not getting in the details of this right now, but you can check our customizer tutorials and work on your website to achieve the desired colors, font, and appearance. Now, I'm going to go through another crucial step for our new radio station website. Oh, remember, by the way, that demos come already with a demo radio channel that you want to trash in order to leave only the correct radio channel. Once done, since these buttons can be linked to a specific radio, edit the page with Elementor and control the name of the radio channel linked to the buttons. Okay, now the number two step of creating our website is to create the show's schedule or programming. At this purpose, what we want to do is basically to replace the existing schedule with our custom programming. You can see the schedule fonts are not rendering correctly. Uh, this is kind of a um, problem that might happen for various reasons when moving or creating a website. It's extremely easy to fix it. The only thing to do is go to the typography options and these options are being basically ignored. So what you want to do is check the font variant And for the menu, publish and look at your website. So 
here we are. Fonts are now correctly loaded. Okay, let's go to the schedule or find any page which presents one. This one, for instance. As you can see, we have the weekly schedule. We need to change this and add our own radio show. Let's imagine that we have, uh, for instance, three DJs. We want the pictures in the exact same style as the photos that come here. So first of all, let's go to grab our pictures. These are demo pictures downloaded from 3 for the purpose of testing, created with AI. And we go to product radio slash shop. Let's go to support downloads and click graphic design templates. This is a free pack of Photoshop files available for all of the demos, which you can uh, find in our uh, roster of uh, offer. This is the 15, which is the one that we chose for our radio station. Let's download this package and see what we have inside. Unzip the package. And as you can see, there are two fonts, which you can install if missing in your website, in your computer and two folders. This folder contains Photoshop templates for all of your social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. This is an example of the result. So what you can do is open this Photoshop file, replace the logo, and use it as header for your Photoshop website, uh, for your uh, Facebook page. Then you have Instagram, this is good to promote new radio shows. Then you have Twitter, the header, and new shows. And then you have the pictures that you can use for your website. In the specific case, radio shows is the template that we want to use. Let's double click and open this in our website. As you can see, there is a folder that says your image here. We are going to double click, then grab the photo of our DJ and place it on the page. Make sure the image is more or less in the middle. Don't make please pictures like this because it's going to be cropped. Don't make pictures like this because it's going to be extremely small. Try to make something with some sense. For instance, something like this. Now, if you have Photoshop, you can take advantage. Let's rasterize the image. You can take advantage of modern technology. So let's click W, which is the select magic wand use cloud and select the subject. In this way, you can remove the background from any picture in a click. No need to be a graphic designer. Let's just copy, command C, paste, command V, and delete this. Save and go back to your image. Once you are here, use the save for web functionality or the export functionality, which you can find here. Save as a copy, for instance, or save as or export. This is the best one because you can actually see how heavy the website, the page is going to be with your pictures. 
consider keeping the pictures below 300 kilobytes. Make them as small as you can without having it look shit. Like this, of course, is going to be crappy. And like this is going to be super heavy. So please don't make 50 radio shows of one megabyte each picture and then complain if the page takes three minutes to load. Images must be compressed for web. 200 kilobytes, it's okay. And let's export our new radio show. This is the picture. Let's rename it so that it is unique. Girls Club show it's red one. Now, go back to your website and on the left, look for radio shows and add a new radio show. Let's call this Mario and Luigi show. Grab your picture, set the feature the image. If DJs send you a bad biography, you may want to use ChatGPT. Now I'm going to make one up. Here we go. Below the content, you will find a lot of other options. There are design options like mega footer or hide page header or custom header, and there are details. Here, you can manage additional information about the presenter. I'm just typing something fun for the sake of the demo. And you can display related podcasts, news, latest music charts, events, and link team members to a radio show. This will create some sort of landing page that your DJs can share on their own social, attracting precious clicks for your registration. As you can see, in a few clicks, we get a very organic radio station page, which can really represent a hub of news and events that this DJ can uh, leverage to promote his own events and music. If you are not happy with the result, with the header and stuff, you can consider going to the customizer and changing the appearance, for instance, of the page header, because we have the parallax enabled. So if you turn it off, the image can have other alignments and you can choose again gradient overlay make this darker make this grayscale duotone so this is going to leave the original colors alignment uh, of the header caption size mobile caption size desktop show a little bit more of the picture 
and manage how you want the page to appear. Um, it's popular to have bad quality picture from the collaborators. No worries, because with ProRadio, you can easily hide them. How? By using all of these effects. So you can make the image a little bit darker. You can make it a little bit more full red. You can make it in duotone <laughs> and stuff like this. You can use 3D effects. You can add a waves effect, for instance. even though I'm going to leave it like this now. And you can, of course, change everything else. Colors, typography, use mega headers, and much, much more. If you're in DAP, if you want to use it correctly, you can go to our documentation. And you can look for the customizer options. At this link, you can find information about all of the available options that you have in the customizer. So here as well, you can click on the question mark and have live information straight in your WordPress website. That said, if you are afraid of uh, breaking your website before starting using it, a very uh, warm recommendation is to take a full WordPress backup before proceeding. This takes perhaps three clicks. How do you take a website backup? No plugin is required. Instead, you go to your services, click on your only one radio website. From here, click log into cPanel. From cPanel, on the left side, you can find WordPress Manager. From this same place, you will be able to change the URL of your website when you want to go live. And you can as well, create a backup. Add a note for your website, and this is going to backup your installation. You can close this page if you want, and backups will be available within the backups list. It is still running, but within a second, the backup is already there and you can see the note. So before making big changes, it's recommended you backup your website so you have a restore point. This is especially um, relevant if you are new to, War to WordPress, if you are not sure what you're doing, and if you are afraid of deleting things that you cannot get back. Anyhow, <clears throat> Let's now have a look at our home page. And let's, um, oh, one step back. We have our radio show ready, but we need to place it in the schedule. So what we want to do is modify the schedule for Thursday. And let's put this radio show. As you can see, you can add and delete shows for the whole day starting this morning, we are going to add our radio show. So starting 8 a.m. till midnight, we are going to add our new radio show, Mario and Luigi's show. Make sure that the checkbox of the corresponding day is enabled. Update. Now, this is going to appear as current radio show. 
Mario and Luigi Show. And here we are. The current radio show is on air. What you are now going to uh, do perhaps is modifying the content of your homepage. Doesn't require any programming. You can just right click on the things and change them. But hey, yes, you can break stuff. You can break stuff. So first of all, I would recommend the following. On the bottom left side, close to the update button, you can click save as template. So this will create a clone of your page stored within the template database. And I'm going to call this new radio website home page before messing it up. So let's make an example. You can see under my templates that the page is now saved. And now let's make a test. Uh, you see this little bar here that's called the navigator. You can bring it out by clicking on the navigator. So right click navigator. This is super useful because you're going to see in a tidy, ordered uh, list of elements all of the components which are now creating your homepage. Some elements can be on top of each other, so are hard to select. With the navigator, you can really get to uh, the specific item you want to edit, like this, for instance. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break the page. So I'm going to delete everything. Oh, I am going, oh, I broke my page. Let's call the support. No need. No need because you have two important um, safe nets here. One is the history machine. But don't rely too much on this because if you close your browser or if you save, the history will be gone. If you go to your history, you can revert the latest changes. If your history is gone, you still have revisions. Revisions are stored automatically every couple of minutes or 60 seconds. These can build up, especially if you leave the page open and uh, you may uh, reach a point where you have thousands of re revisions. If you have too many revisions, remember that your browser may crash. What happens if it does? It happens that you work, you work, you work on your page and once you are done and you say, oh, I really want to save, you go here, click update and boom, 500 error page broken. You cannot save your changes. Your work is lost. Yes, this can happen. And this is linked to misuse of the tools. So imagine you are in an office and you're making sketches for a new drawing and you make so many sketches that you cannot move your hands on the desk anymore. So your desk is filled of trash, of sketches that you saved for any uh, stage of your design. You cannot draw anymore. That's normal. So what you need to do is delete your revisions. How do you delete your revisions? To delete your revisions, you need to go to plugins, add new, and look for WP sweep. This plugin once activated, we'll add a tool under tools. And it will tell you how many revisions you have out there. We had customers with problems uh, for saving the page. And once checking their website, they had about 3,000 revisions. So Elementor has kind of a weird functionalities. If you have 2,000 revisions of this page, they are going kind of to be listed 
in this page. And this is all going to be part of the memory of your tab. As you can see, I am now 254 megabyte of RAM used by this tab while editing the page, which is perfectly normal. If you have 2000 revisions, this is going to create a little link here for every revision. And this tab is going to be perhaps 15 gigabytes. This means that all of your RAM and your sketch disk are going to be ready to be full. And you are not ready to save because when you save your page crashes, the server crashes and it's not going to work. So you go to sweep and sweep the revisions. Attention that once you do this, you cannot restore previous points. But since before starting to work, we have been wise and we saved a template. Now check out our restore point. So if you go here, oops, no revisions, we just deleted them. So how do we get back our precious homepage without re-importing the demo again? Because if you re-import the demo, it is going to mess up your website. Instead, once we could restore the backup made with cPanel, but if it is not required, if it is only about one page, what you do is delete everything, click on this folder icon, click on templates, this is a little bit slow and new radio website homepage before messing it up. Insert. Apply the page settings. OK. And here we are. Your new homepage is ready. Now, before closing this tutorial, I'm going to show you something extremely useful. Let's say that you want some piece of page that you see in another demo. For instance, this nice video header, because you say, yes, this page is overall good for me, but it's not the homepage I want for my radio. I want this header. How do we bring this header in this homepage? So edit this one in Elementor, and we have two ways of doing this. The first way is using templates. It's a slower but more, more solid way of working. Rename this in something you are going to recognize and then click right, click Save as Template. Now go back to your page. It's possible that this is not going to be available. Uh, in this case, just reload the page. If it is available, insert the template. Do not apply the page settings because they can involve width of the page, colors, and other factors which are of this homepage. So you don't want to apply the settings. And here we are. So what we do now with this section, trash it and boom. Now, for instance, you want to adapt it because the gradient is not matching with the background. So if the gradient is not matching, if you have any background set, you can look at here. Otherwise, you need to know the color of this background, which can be obtained, for instance, within the customizer. Copy this color, go here, I hope I got a good one, style, and go to background, overlay, oh, yes, no, and in the main container, let's add a background overlay with a gradient that
um, for any reason is not being applied. Okay. Sometimes options can get stuck in Elementor. Don't worry, play a little bit with them and maybe remove and add again the video, change the colors, try switching on and off the parallax or other options and you will see that they will start to take effect. Now we want to adjust a little bit our background overlay and make this gradient behind a little bit more subtle. So you can see I can play with this and here we go. And for instance, make sure that this button is playing the correct radio channel. You can now really work on everything you want of your page. We have other advanced tutorials like this one, so we are not going in, de in depth of the Elementor functionality right now. Instead, we are going, okay, you can see there is some issue here because some parameters of the page got messed up. Don't worry, can happen. This is extremely easy to solve. Elementor simply deleted the page template attribute, which if you edit with the regular editor is available here. And as you can see, it got back to the default template. It's a popular issue when, edit, when editing with Elementor and the solution is to simply choose Page Visual Composer and Update. And now your page is 100% correct. Here we are. Now there are a couple recommendations to uh, make sure your website works fine. The first of all is to go to plugins, add new, and install Wordfence. Wordfence is an extremely popular and free security plugin which does not break your website because we tried all of them and they have the, the tendency of breaking websites. This will work fine. You can get a free license, just enter your email and yet you get a code. They are mostly monitoring the usage of the plugin. And then you have a tons of um, options that you can craft. Firewall, brute force protection, and very important, once uh, you are okay with the login of your website and everything, set up two-factor authentication. Set up two-factor authentication in order to require a second code from your mobile phone to enter in your website. This will make sure that even if your password gets stolen, people cannot log in in your website and you are safe. If you lose this code, no worries because you can always go back to your cPanel and access your login instead of the WP login from here. And the other important plugin that we recommend is an SEO plugin. So you can request us for a list of tips for once your website is ready. You don't do this when you are in a staging subdomain because that would be a waste of time. You do this once the website is out and running and it is all-in-one SEO. This plugin takes care of generating sitemaps 
letting Google know your website is there, optimizing the permalinks, the titles and the descriptions, and most importantly, what you can do with this plugin is to craft how your website looks when you share a link on the social networks. So I'm not going through the setup now, but basically there is a free extension that allows to set the featured image and title for social network sharing. Otherwise, when you share a link on Facebook, the link preview is going to have your website logo and some generic title, which is not what you want. There are specific plugins. Uh, there is all in one SEO. Also, Yoast SEO works fine. You need to set them up in order to have your website working as expected. Then, if you want some statistics, the best you can do is to install the Google Sidekit plugin. So, go back to plugins, add new. and install Google Sidekit. And it's like this. Once installed, you can easily connect it with your Google account. It's a step-by-step -step procedure. You can know how many people are online, which pages they are visiting, and make sure there are no uh, crawling errors which are preventing the indexing of your, of your website. It's possible that the original installation has access prevented to the crawlers. What you need to do is go to settings. Sorry. Um, to reading, settings, reading, and make sure that search heading visibility is not enabled. This is something that you need to take care of when you publish your website on the final URL. Because right now, it is fine to have it like this. But if you have it enabled once your website goes public, this is going to instruct Google, Bing and Yahoo to not display your website in their search results page. So once the website is ready, along with all-in-one SEO or Yoast SEO, uncheck this option and this is going to make your website crawlable. Uh, publishing the website on the final destination requires a couple steps more. So once you purchase Groove, GrooveClubRadio.com or whatever your website is, Remember to go to the knowledge base and check out in the getting started page, moving aside from staging to production. There are four steps that you need to follow. They will involve re-entering your license key because if the domain changes, the license key needs to be re-entered and making a few checks. Once done, you can um, set up your Google account and submit your sitemap and share your website on the socials. And this is where your radio station journey begins. We have lots of video tutorials, suggestions, tips for the success of your radio station. Make sure to follow them in order to get the most out of your brand new radio station website. As you've seen, we are now recording since uh, 2 hours and 20. Now, uh, the radio station is essentially out there and rocking and playing music. This is how long it takes to create a new radio station website with Pro.Radio. So, 100 bucks and your radio is up and running. I hope you understand that this solution is not comparable with uh, 
all of the other solutions out there in terms of simplicity, completeness, amount of available features, and uh, level of quality of the end result. So I hope this tutorial was useful and I hope this tutorial will help uh, everybody out there with the dream of creating a cool radio station to realize his dream and to achieve an excellent result. We are looking forward to see your links. And we are looking forward to share them on our social network. Thank you for watching and don't forget to use the coupon code that was previously shared to purchase your new radio station website. See you at the next video tutorial.